Hi guys and welcome to the first lesson on Unit 1 Chemistry. These pre-lessons are designed to give you a background information of the lesson in class and the content that we'll be covering. So it's important that you watch these pre-lessons before you come into class so that when you do come into class we can do the questions and you can receive the most help on all the problems that you do and all of the exercises that we do. So each pre-lesson will be given a title as you can see here and that will refer to what the lesson's about. No surprises there. So the first lesson we're talking about electron shell orbitals and the Bohr model of the atom. At the beginning of each lesson, I'll give you a learning outcome. That learning outcome is taken from the VCAA sample design. Now that is what you're required to learn by the state. So unit 1A, area study 1A, dot point 3, that's the um, learning outcome of this lesson. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to complete and do the first part of this dot point. We're looking at the spectral evidence for the Bohr model of the atom, and that's what we're concerned with today. The rest of the dot point we're doing in pre-lesson two. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe the spectral evidence for the Bohr model of the atom and how the Bohr model of the atom works. So as we've talked about, atoms make up all elements. So an atom is made up of protons, and neutrons which form the nucleus of the atom and then electrons are around the outside of that atom. Electrons are arranged in shells and these are floating or orbiting around the nucleus. As you can see in this diagram here, this GIF file, you can see that the electrons are shown in yellow moving around the nucleus are moving in these orbits or these circle arrangements. So around like this or like this. So that is the Bohr model of the atom. To describe the spectral evidence for the Bohr model of the atom, this this slide here. So when electrons and even when the atom is created, it will absorb light. So here we have an, an atom, and it has electrons moving around its nucleus. This electron here, starting from this one here, is heated or it gains a photon. Photon is just a word for an amount of wavelength of light. So it gains a photon, or it gains an amount of light, and it's absorbed. So it takes that energy in. What then happens is that electron will move up an energy level. So the incoming photon will cause the electron to jump up an energy level. Over here, or over here. So it's being absorbed in both cases and it's jumping up. So it's moving from this area, the lower energy level, low energy level in the core, to a higher energy level, which is up here. After it does this, the electron is under this area, so the electron has come down. So the electron will then drop down an energy level, return to its ground state. Was it, it was in a lower state at the beginning, and moved to an excited state. Now it's dropping back to its low energy level. And from here, it will release wavelength of light, or will release light. So this light is emitted here. When this light is emitted, it will release a color. And this color is what we see and the spectral evidence for the Bohr model of the atom. So, what we have here in this diagram, just remove this. In this diagram we have a metal in the green color. A metal's being heated, its electrons will be excited, we'll then select the wavelength of light, split that open with the prism, and we can see all of the colors that it emits. So all of the colors that are coming out here, we can see emitted in this emission spectrum which is also shown in black here. That will show you the colors there. So using this understanding that electrons are excited and they'll release light when they drop down an energy level, this helped us understand that electrons are arranged in shells. And different energy levels will release different light. So if you have a third energy level here, it will release a different color to the second energy level here when excited and de-excited. So as I mentioned before, electrons are arranged in shells and they're moving in a circular orbit around the nucleus. And that's the Bohr model of the atom. That's what's been described. 
these electrons correspond to specific energy levels. So first inner part here, that's the first energy level. Then this one here is the second energy level, and this is the third. So the core or the inner parts are the higher energy levels, and the outer parts are the sorry, the core is the lower energy levels, and the outside is the higher energy levels. Now each energy level or each um, shell could hold a certain number of electrons. The first shell can hold two electrons, the second shell can hold eight electrons, the third shell 18, and the fourth shell 32. So what does that look like? So as we know, each shell has a specific number of electrons it can hold, as listed by this table. The lower energy shell is the closest to the nucleus, and they're filled first. Higher energy are, are further away, and they're filled last. So if we have, for example, the element sodium. Sodium, which is Na. We know sodium has an atomic number, or Z, is equal to 11. So it has 11 protons. It's a neutral atom, meaning it will also have 11 electrons. So right now, we are only concerned about the electrons. So 11 electrons in total as its neutral atom. We want to know how the electrons are arranged in their orbitals. So we know that the first shell will hold two electrons. So of the 11, the first two will go in the first shell, which is shown here. Then the next second shell holds eight. So if we have Two electrons in the first and eight in the second, we now have a total of 10 electrons. Obviously, sodium has 11 electrons, so there must be one more, and the final electron will be in the outer shell. So the electron configuration will be two in the first shell, eight in the second shell, and two, sorry, and one in the final shell, making the electron configuration 2, 8, 1. So what I want you to do now is Read these rules. These are the rules of how we fill and use an electron configuration using the Bohr model of the atom. And I want you to use this table to answer these questions. So pause the video, read through these rules, answer these questions to write the electron configuration for these atoms. Of course, sodium has been done for you. So let's do that again. Okay, welcome back. So now here are the answers for the electron configuration, how you should write it. Helium has only two electrons, so it would simply just be two. Sodium, we already did that, has 2, 8, 1. And potassium, with 19 electrons, will be 2, 8, 8, 1. Now, I'm sure you know that you saw the third shell has 18 electrons. But why is there not 9 electrons filled in the third shell here? Well, according to the orbital model, the electrons will fill 8 electrons in the third shell first. So, 8 electrons. Fill in the third shell. And then it will begin to fill the fourth shell. The reason for this is it's more stable for the electrons to fill eight in the third shell and then begin to fill the fourth shell before it will completely return and fill the third. So if you have more than um, eight electrons, you'll begin to fill the fourth shell and then you'll go back and fill the third. This is a limitation of the Bohr model of the atom and why we have a different model to talk about electron filling. Okay, so have, an, have a go with this new format now for selenium. So the answer for here is 2, 8, 18, and 6. You can see that there's a completely filled third shell and a partially filled fourth shell of electrons. All right, summary of today's video. Electrons are organized into shells as defined by the Bohr model of the atom. We use spectral evidence to look at that where electrons are excited and they release light when they come back down to their ground state. Electrons are moving in shells based on this evidence that I just talked about just then. Circling around the nucleus in an orbital arrangement and the filling of the orbitals happens in a 2, 8, 18, 32 pattern given by the rule 2N2. So the questions I'd like you to complete for this video are one to five of your chemistry, chapter 1.6 review, page 26. And if you need any more assistance with this, you can go through with examples 1.62 on page 25. Thanks for watching.